is Ricardo. Oh. Then he said, in quite profound to me, he said, 
He committed suicide four years ago. And I thought, oh dear, you know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So we all sat down. Imagine a little alcove of a bar. She sat there, I'm here, my brother Dave there, my dad there, and her husband there. She started telling me this story. She said, before he uh, took his own life, he was a young lady, we never had a baby, I'm very close to the, my granddaughter and the mother, we kept very close. And she said, I've always put his Christmas card out. I've always kept his Christmas card that I sent him four years ago. So on the mantel piece, imagine the mantel piece and the clock, the son's car, the other side of the clock, the daughter and the baby. She said she went to bed that night, came down next morning, there's two cards on the floor. Not right directly on the floor, away from the fireplace, but inside of each other. It was the son and the daughter and the baby's car inside of each other. So she got on to the dad, John, look at this. He says, don't be silly, mum, when you do care, shut the door. Draft them off that mantle piece, you know. So she said to me, so I'm visualizing this. She says, that night, nobody else in the house, curtains are closed, cards back on the mantle piece, door shut to bed. Next morning, two cards on the floor inside of each other. And this, friends, was the life changing episode of my life. Because at that moment in time, she said that everybody in that cup disappeared. And all I saw was a grey swirling mist and a mighty white cup. I just had no fear of this mist. I could see her face, but nobody else's. Just her little face shining through. And out of this mist starts coming a set of granite steps going up. And I'm watching these granite steps building going up, and up, and up. And suddenly at the top, a young man walks out. How many of you remember Adam Hans? Yeah, we well, looked like Adam Hans. Gel back hair, ragged looking man, black leather chains. And he says to me, Tell me, Mum, stop crying. I know what I did was wrong, but it was my time. Nothing would have stopped it. Remember those four things that he told me? As I'm telling you, the face sort of lifts. And you see the release, and now we're not here with healing, but her face starts to lift and spread and open. And as quick as it was there, it was gone. My brother's looking at me, my dad's looking at me. Mom saw her husband because she's got an arm around and saying, Tell me more, tell me more like this. And I'm thinking, What the, you know, happened there? What happened there? I couldn't believe it. And in my mind, like a record, the needle stuck was this. How do I get to the church? 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 Like that went over and over. I looked at all their drinks. <coughs> Mine was still full. So today, can you really give a drink here? I've got to go somewhere. I jumped in my van like a rabbit shot to Harrogate. And you where the church was, which was like a shop I'd never been in. It didn't mean anything to me, you know. I just knew where it was. I pulled outside, outside, and I put yellow lights. The door was open. I didn't know, I wouldn't know it would be open, so I could have a coffee morning. And I runs in like a man possessed. <laughs> Little old lady with a, with a teacup, crying, very serene. I said, you've got a pamphlet, a book, something. Something's happened to me. I'm like, it's in the book. I've had to come here. I don't know why I'm in it, but I need some answers, you know. Very quiet, I said to him. Sonny, he said, there's the book, son. You don't know what you want, do you? Why do you come to one of the services? It's a service. He said, it's Sunday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. So I went to home. I went to see my wife. I've been married to her for 20, then, no, not 20 years. And she was a Christian scientist. I lived on a Christian science complex. As for spiritual believing, they said it was a closed book. As she said, I said, I'm going somewhere tonight, please. Where are you going? Uh, spiritual church. Bam! You don't go there, it's evil, you don't go anywhere near the place. You go there, I've lost you, she said. I remember her saying that. I said, look, I know what you do with your work is wonderful. I'm not questioning it. Something's happened to me. I need answers for me. And I went. Walked in, him buggy my hand. I'm 38 years old, I'm like him buggy my hand. I'm thinking, God, I'm so mean to him since I went to school. 
I walked into the, into the church, there was a bench, sat on my own there, and it's medium, and I went by the name of uh, Ken Armitage, as the spirit now. And he goes, go there, he goes, young man there, in a green t shirt, and I went, <laughs> he went, don't you know, you've got a green t shirt on, I'll never forget that. He says, uh, about the old Red Cross, which I know was my grandmother, so I didn't know the time, my grandmother's favourite thing. And he said, I don't be a forever, he said, in ten years' time, you'll be the theatre in this. And I thought, got the wrong bloke. At that point in my life, I thought, he has got the wrong bloke. So I goes out with the old lady, and says, oh, really, you know, this is your first time here, I've got a good thing, you're a biscuit. I think, what's all this about? Sat talking with me. I went home and think I'm off tomorrow, I'm off tomorrow. So I went on Sunday, I went on Saturday, I went on Sunday, I went on Saturday. No matter where I go, I went to church, that was the reason. No matter where I sat in the church, like 40, 50 people, every week, young man, from young man in the middle, young man in the back, got a reading every week from the meeting. Green, red and green lights, railway seats, slow down, shame, one step, one step at a time, and I was coming out. Church, standing on the church steps and thinking, this is the best ten pints of ten I've ever had in my life. I've got no wine. I didn't, that's what I thought. I don't know what's happening to me. Something was happening to me that I couldn't explain. And I was, it was just so incredible. Thirteen weeks after walking in that church there, Harrogate Church, like a man possessed, they had the church at AGM. I was sworn in as a church chairman. I'm sat in the church thinking, it's happening again. Why me? What's going on? People had seen something in me. Okay? I was on that committee for about six months. I will never sit on a church committee ever again. However, evil resides in church committee for me. <laughs> Not a place for a spiritualist at all. And uh, I was out of the came in, but nearly ten years Today, I'm on the platform at Harrogate Church, taking the service, telling that story. Very, very much for me. Because that is such a special place for me. Now then, a medium called Sandy, that was in Spain, you know, and she had done for it, but she gave you a demonstration of the church. In his book, he talks about a sailing tree. I thought, a sailing tree? What's that? I was fascinated listening to him telling stories about a sailing tree. So, as always, the meeting goes into the, the tea room, and I'm sat away from him, got back to him, so he's sort of around, and just always going, This man here, give him my phone, but you ring me up next week, he says to me. I like that way. So I rang him up, he says, Can you come to Doncaster? I need to see you. 50 miles away from where I live in Harrow. Went to see Sandy. Real thick Doncaster accent, Sandy. And suddenly her head goes back and her arm comes up. And David Griffin says, uh, just pardon me, it's the biggest need you've ever seen. That I think she's got a dink in her arm. She says, don't worry, she won't feel it, just to prove she's out of her body. And this beautiful Chinese voice comes out of her mouth. Good evening, Sandy. It is not that thing you are here. You are indeed. Got a wonderful gift. And uh, he talked about the transfiguration of the stand. He talked about the voice of the community. He said, In six weeks' time, there will be a place in my lady's circle, and you will be allowed to come. So after the sales, he wakes up and well, he won't say it, but he comes to the church. He wakes up and uh, gives it all wonderful stuff, you know, no And then, oh, there's no place in the circle, oh, so we've got no room, you know, so I'm not kidding, I wait for him. Five and a half weeks, phone went. Hello, Chris, it's Sandy. He came to my house. Uh, a friend of mine is getting up to the castle in Serbia tomorrow and said, You want to come? Six weeks. So they said, I had a place in Sandy's circle that night. Well, in any of your sentences, no matter what was happening on Saturday night, I was in Doncaster. I had to go to Doncaster, no matter what happened, car broke down, I got a taxi, I was going to Doncaster. We stand. It's two weeks out, she said. We got on so famous, which is my favorite, this lady. 
and with a wonderful table for them on the Saturday. And as, as, as you do in a physical circle, anything happens, you're supposed to talk about it. So this week it's his hand on the shoulder. Hand on his shoulder. Second week, hand on the right shoulder. Hand on his shoulder. In the third week, I've got two hands on the shoulder. And I felt like an empty glass filling with water. And I filled up. Whoa, for such a time, the table flew in the air. She went, turn the light on, turn the light on. <laughs> I was out of her circle. Anybody developing in her circle was wrong. Because she would always be wondering about me. So I went upstairs, and uh, as, as always, after that sitting, we'd have some sandy going to trance, and a guy could say, I'll sit in one So Chan comes through and says, Oh, I've to put my medium right outside. She can't believe her best sitter. She can't believe what's happened with your Chris right outside. And he said, All you do, then, if Chris decides to put his medium in my home and sit for my lady, he was hugging and loving his other brother and wishing her. But Chris, he said, if you decide to leave and I'll give you two weeks to develop your own leadership and your guys are looking for you and all this, all this blah 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 thing. All you hear is loving, hugging, and wishing well as a brother. It was the most wonderful thing I'd ever take. I wish I'd take it. Didn't take me two minutes, didn't take me two minutes, you play the music there.
for some of you. A wonderful couple I've never thought of in Roosevelt called Georgina and Robert Gray. Now, Georgina and Robert Gray were incredible people. They've been spiritualists all their life. They worked for White Eagle Lodge. And through the mediumship of Helen Duncan, um, Georgina's husband, who passed in the first month of the Dunley Marriage Month, on the hood, the first ship to get sunk, she lost her husband in you know, the first month of the marriage. The mediumship of Helen Duncan, her husband materialized in a full uniform and said to their the friend, the three of them went together, you must marry God in this life, he will love you, look after you, you have wonderful children, and by the end of your life, my love, I'll be waiting for you. Now, Paul, I totally accepted this, the strangest thing. I thought he knew that uh, uh, Ronald was waiting for Georgina, he knew this, and he accepted it. I would be married on the years. No, no jealousy in him whatsoever. Wonderful people sat for me. So different to Sandy, very spiritual people. And she used to go into trance, well, not this way yet, but go into trance with Georgina. That guy might start to say to me, Chris, close your eyes and tell me what you see. I used to see myself on a bike in front of the on I might be up a mountain on an aircraft, back to the mountains with some, some clothes or all me. I called it my spiritual wish you were here, I was all over the place. And then, about three weeks after being sitting, I looked in my mind's eye and I saw this Indian reservation. And I saw a fire of the sea on its tent sitting inside going down. All, all, all the graves stood looking towards where I was, and all the squalls that side of me. And I was on a map, and there was something I couldn't see here, with wonderful um, leathery type blue thing, where all tassels on me. I couldn't see his face. And he said to me, My name is White Feather. You, my brother, it is your time to come here at this time. I am the one who will watch over your life. And, uh, and the squall came up, gave me one focus, and I'll never forget it. I can take the first step. That was back in 94, 95. From there on, the, she got very ill, and uh, she passed away with Georgina. And about a year later, Paul passed away. Obviously, couldn't sit there anymore in Huddersfield. And Beatrice Jackson, I met her in her church, and she said, come to my home. I love to talk to her about it. She opened her home up to me. She was my circle leader for four years. She used to go black the wings out there an hour early and sit with Beatrice. And all she used to say to me was, I just want you to, I just want you to have your own leaders. I took her to Harry and Sanctuary and I took her all over to my church religious everywhere. Because with the trance states with me, the clairvoyance starts to happen. I've developed it the wrong way around with it all. Most clairvoyants go into physical, but I've been other way around. I started with physical and got clairvoyance. And anyway, and she used to come to the church and she would be in anywhere. Anyway, poor girl, she, uh, that wasn't long before she passed away. She was very heavy on her legs. And uh, we booked her into Stuart Alexander and friends at Cobra Hill. And she passed away earlier on the year. So that, time, that, that particular seance there, the, a medium called David Thompson was from Australia. And in the sales, this gentleman came through called Honest Jack. Oh, it's Honest Jack! Because I wasn't, but I am now. He's talking about that. And he, he was so funny. And he said, Anybody got any questions? So I just said, I've got a chance. Can you tell me my friend Beatrice has arrived? Okay. What's her name? I'm Beatrice. What's her second name? He said, Jackson. He had these footsteps. Through, like through a door, it wasn't, you know, the, it's a big Jackson here, like an image out of it. Come on then. Door open. Is that you, Chris? Is that you who said it was here? It's magic. Oh, I just wanted to get you on your way. And there were three or four people in that seance who knew me, they said they knew it was her voice. Incredible. So she did get there in the end, but not from this side, from that side. So that was Beatrice Jackson. And uh, when she finally passed away, we um, didn't sit with her much longer. Uh, a little bit of power you got crept in from her, from her to the daughter in New Mexico. So uh, briefly, um, 
This is uh, the Northern Ireland Society that was a member of. Uh, a wonderful society set up for the safe development and uh, demonstration of physical reading. Unfortunately, power and ego killed it. Simple as that. What was that? Um, now then, you know, the gentleman in the middle, a little bit earlier. That is the wonderful Tom Harrison. Tom was Minnie Harrison's son from the wonderful circle there in the middle row in the 40s and 50s, and a uh, wonderful photograph which uh, means all your treasure. Okay? Uh, now, this is the name of Brother Dave. <laughs> Brother Dave is a wonderful healer who worked his healing through uh, my circle work. Instantaneous healing. He's been on TV and radio on the brother. And he's still a chef, he's not a field director anymore. And that night, he sat up every now and then taking photographs of orbs for about an hour in the hallway. Me and our day. I don't think there's any young man, so I can't see any. But that's the name of the day. You used to sit in my, sit in my circle every morning. Now. Um, now that's me just before um, a transfiguration demonstration that I did at Stanford Church, Westwood Church. Now can you see the orbs and the energy around the cabinet? That just before the lights went out for transfiguration. I'm getting, as I do, coming to Northern States. That's uh, my circle leader at the time as well. Wonderful lad. Uh, sat with me for years as well. And uh, sadly now he's in the early stage of dementia. And I've had to let him go because uh, his mood swings and things. Very, very sad. I love all that, my brother. That was there. Anyway, that's that. Um, now that's. Who's that fellow in that cock out there? Yeah. <laughs> that's my sales room at Rington, where we lived we before Winter Reef. And that's the first time I put that outfit on. And I said to Sylvia, what can we do with this outfit? Because we, we had to go into a special uh, event we're going to do down in London. We sat in the wardrobe for a minute. I said, I know, I'm just from a church room. And you know, when you wear something, it feels good. It works for me. So sometimes I wear that for church. I took it to America and I'm all the way around. Now then, I don't think you can, you can see very well, but if you... Oh, I'm trying to go back. Right there, you might, you might not be able to see it, the, the face of a little girl. Can anybody see it? Through the back of the door. It's a bit hard to see. The pixelation won't look very good. Can you just see the... See, I can see the face now. There's a light Two little eyes there, the mouth, the nose. Have you seen it? Yes. That little girl that did in my cabinet at that time. So I've got to show you that. Um, I don't think that, that was going to be something. Very good. Oh. So, we've got. Oh. Yeah. Now then, this is. Uh, in Lydia, and you get a food there in the United States. It's a little spiritual pickup. And I mean a little haven of America dedicated to mediumship. And in the background, my, my colleague who was here last year, my mum always talked about the Bang Sisters. Those are the Bang Sisters photographs in the back. You can see them in the background. Now that guy there is Neil Rapunzel. He witnessed my mediumship in France when 20 people materialised and walked out of the cabinet, touched everybody, the table at the back of the room levitated in front of the cabinet, white feather was booming out in the middle of the hall, the best sales I have ever, ever had. And again, I walked up and all the way. Now, Neil booked me, thank you, booked me for the States. And I had three services to do in the States. Friday, Saturday night. Sunday, three church services 
I was only leaving by Sunday night for a fast church service. And uh, I was on the plane going, I'm not thinking, am I ready? Am I ready? I'm ready for this. So that was uh, early on this year, April this year. Oh, sorry, I don't know about that. Now, when the... I'm trying to show you that picture there. See that lovely girl there? This was a picture done by... I think I've got the name of the lines now. The Light of the Mind Sisters, but they're American, two, two brothers. And this is what was written on that plaque. Can you read that or read that? Hamlet brothers. Their own mother thought it was the work of the devil and denounced it. Didn't want anything to do with it. It was her daughter. Now, isn't that so sad, right? Eh? So sad. That beautiful, that beautiful girl. Yeah, that lovely, lovely girl. The detail and the frock and everything. You can't see it here, but it was unbelievably fantastic. Precipitated photograph. And I've always precipitated photograph, it's always the eyes. The eyes stare, you know, the stare of the eyes. Like that. The fantastic, fantastic. You can, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see them looking at them walking around the room. A very wonderful place. Um, right. Let's have a look. Now, we've all heard of the Fox Sisters. I don't think the Fox Sisters where modern media should be supposed to have started. That is a cabinet taken from the House of Third Down, all the artifacts of the Fox Sisters. The original sign up there, the wooden sign on the house, and they're denoting. Um, um, it's not a very good photograph, but there's a picture of the, of the, uh, of the place. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, we'll come back. Um, moving on really swiftly. That gentleman there, his name is Kai Nuki. An incredible physical medium. A very good friend of mine. We call each other spiritual brothers. I love him to this. Hannah was a big lad. I got to Hannah in Germany after an horrible, horrible 2010. Went out for a day, stuck in Frankfurt Airport for four days when all the airports were locked out. Remember that? I was there. This man here comes bounding down the platform like I'm a long lost brother. Please fire! This man here. The old medium, the vector doesn't come out. You know the old mediums? This man has got it. He has got it in lights. Have you seen it? No, no. Got it in my in this line to write it wasn't going out there for everybody to see. Incredible thing to do. Yes, yeah. Now, through his medium ship, you see that crystal there? This was in uh, Spain. Um, his guide, Hans Bender, Hans Bender, said to Julia, Julia, why, Julia, do you trust us? Yes, Thomas. Oh, Julia, do you trust us like that? Yes, I do, Hans. Okay. Pick up the torch, which all white tiles in the room, but I was there to witness this. When the medium's foot was that, you switch the light and shine it on the floor. Light on the floor, there was ectoplasm coming through the curtain, down from the middle, and there was the head of Hans Benjamin, fully materialised. To us, just a head speaking to us. He says, When I tap my finger again, he uh, says, Turn the light off, off, on again, and streams and streams of ectoplasm coming out like cloth on the floor, loads of it. Tap his foot again, on again, nothing. Totally gone in a second, nothing in the left. On again, and then he's fumbling about now, he's like he's fumbling about like this, and out of ectoplasm, Emerged that crystal. You know my friend from America, Neil Lebrowski? It was for him. And he brought from his Indian guy and a man that dealt with AIDS. It was the most immensely moving sense. Because nobody knew that Neil was an AIDS doctor. He has AIDS himself, he's cured himself, and he helps AIDS and people on drugs. You know, that's his job as a doctor. And the wonderful stuff that came through for him there was unbelievable. Now then, anybody know what a sweat lodge is? Sweat lodge? I've never cooked, I've never felt in my lungs 
ever in my life like I felt in the sweat wash. It wasn't that bad. Most spiritual, wonderful spiritual experience. Full time holy moment goes over there. You can't see that. It's like a sail through. Hot rocks in the middle, glowing. And then the pour water on. And the heat comes down. It comes down. Like a tap was on my head. I was so wet. I thought I was going to melt. But I got my breath. And right at the end, this hot breath hit me in the face. I told him about it. Said, that was your genetics way to put you in there. I wanted to test if you could stand it. You're in there for about an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. Most incredible. And if you ever get a chance to go into a sweat lodge, do it. It's the most incredible spiritual experience you've done correctly. That was in America. Now, that was the same tree, but um, that's the cabinet I was in there. Like, all the names out the chairs for people. I doubt this. I know exactly where everybody's going to sit in the same room. That night in that same room, uh, uh, yeah. about that chair there, no, I'll that one, that one. Get that over there somewhere. A wonderful star, I won't name him, from the deep south of America, a wonderful man. Materialised in the sales. A lady who had come that night, I think she was in the 90s, she came there to do a mass and a gas bottle between the right and I think, oh my god, how's she going to see this, huh? How do you think? She brought this wonderful chocolate cake, so that off. <laughs> so she sat on that seat there, around there somewhere. She could hardly walk, sat her down, and I'm thinking, well, it's Neil's friend, you know, she's invited her. Sales started, everything happened. And halfway through the, the Transfiguration Estate, when I've had, I think, three or four ladies in tears, because with myself now, what they do in the Transfiguration Estate is they recognise the face, the face stays, and they bring a smell through my hands, and the smell always pertains to the loved one. And that's the thing that does it, you just can't believe it. There's one lady there, and all she could smell was marijuana, and it was a brother. And, that, and he, he lived on marijuana all his life, what killed him? She said, everything is smelly. Can you imagine that? Not a while in the right hands. Yeah, that really happened. Bless her. Um, so, that night, Louis Armstrong. Five minutes. Louis Armstrong. Bounds in us. Oxygen mask off the lady's face. Picks her up. Dances around the central of what a wonderful world. And the lady on the other side, the same time, Spinning around each other. <laughs> Afterwards, the lady said, it was like I was on a cotton wool. I couldn't feel my legs. It was wonderful. I was having an energy back. He flew. I could feel his arm on my back and flinging me around the same tree. Can you imagine that? How wonderful is that? And he told me, he told the circle it was something called my location. He was in two places at once. Two ladies got up against. Just that little first of me. Um, another gentleman from there, uh, I'd have to say his name, and I'm not saying it's in my head, I know it's not in my head, I've had him for many, many years, lead singer with Queen, you all know him, Freddie Mercury, was dancing on the top and flying around and really touching all the ladies to his music. There was a meeting sat in there, she said to me, I'm a Goldust in Black, my name is the Reverend Jane, I'm a trumpet reader. I've been a trumpet meeting for 26 years and I've been told to come and see you in the world. Oh, come and see me. Oh, I don't think it goes okay. Right? End of the sales. Been there two hours. I'm thinking I'm going to go to the loo. Everybody sat like this. There's one lady sat there. Well, where's it? Over here, over there somewhere. I've had a grandmother in lights, in a dim green light, holding her hands for 20 minutes, fully materialised. This Reverend Jay comes up to me and I'm thinking, I want to say something to me, Chris, I thought, here we go. I've been sitting for 26 years as a trumpet in I have never, ever been in anything so powerful in all my life. Let me have this photo to you. She wouldn't even try to shadow. Now, for me, all I do when I'm going to try this, I get my kaleidoscope out and I go, there you go. It's not me, it's them. It's my wonderful spirit team. 
There's been a lot of water under the bridge for me to get to where I am there. And I'm going to briefly quickly go through some of it to show you. Um, that was me at church in the day in my dock outfit. I was looking rather fashion and old and then in a reminder of the traffic to wake up tonight. Can you see the energy on my face there? Building. That was before the last sales. There's two photographs of the energy on my face, nobody can explain it. That was a little meal that took me out before I sat at the last sales in the day on Tuesday. Uh, again, you can see it on the face. That's that emerged in the photograph. Neil and Emmy, the wonderful lady who uh, brought me over there in the phone. Sorry? Yeah, I know, it's a weird meal, isn't it? I never thought it at the time, but remember. Now again, that is a... Uh, Where's that saying? Oh, that's the... Oh, that one the face. Can, can you write it up a little bit, Travis? Now, on the last day in Lillydale, every going to work, he went to wait for the taxi to pick me up. I took some photographs of the same thing. You won't be able to see that, but see there? That's a man's face in the top of the camera. And you can't see where that is, I've loaded it up, but there's a, the, the, the man's face that captured. And I took some other photographs and came and took that out again, and four frames on, would you believe, it's still there in the photograph. And I thought, who's that? Who are you? And your glasses on and a white beard, and a wonderful, wonderful man. So, anyway, friends, briefly, Sweden, in that sale, it's had a white feather parted into my hand. White feathers appear everywhere around me. He said it was very significant. And in a few moments time, my partner Sylvia will... That's the white feather book in my hand there, that's the day I left. And that's the feather book that brought to me in my hand on that night for his mediumship. Wonderful. That's another one from Corby. Tell me all, just before I'm going to sit. All the spiritual old sign that we captured that night. My stuff. He called it my sudden sail tree, and Tom and Bill that sail tree on. And there we are, friends, that's what I did. So now, I want to pass on to my partner, Sylvia, who I know you will be blown away with her incredible work. It is beyond the physical. So, so. You cannot really give them a name, 
and the languages are so complex and different to English, you would find it hard to understand them. But I do have a clip I will be sharing with you of ET and how they actually speak. And um, I, hope, <laughs> I hope you can uh, get with it. And then if you go to the next slide, oh, I'll be still on track. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. This is another sitting on it. The whole community, you can see the claws. Just bear with me. I've got this one. Yeah, of course, in the middle, but it's not even. Sorry. Right, there we go. Right. The claws are just. It's me. <laughs> it's my nerves, sorry. I'll find that would be easier. These two brown long things up here, the side of the numbers, you'll see them very clear to see. The light claws, can you see that? Oh yeah, pull the mic away. So, so hard, you can see it. I'm so small. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the different beings, will show themselves in many forms and they can come in so fast and gone within a short time. But aliens, as in the term you would recognize better than any other name, if they wish to show themselves, they will. If they want to go instantly invisible, they've got forms of technology that is beyond Earth. And they could just be stood next to you, be right there with you, and you wouldn't know it. Unless they make themselves aware to you, but they're there. Right, I don't know if you'll see this, but I'll point it out to you. It's not very really clear. Just at the top, on that brown beam, just at the side, there's a blue. It looks like an arm. That's what you were thinking it is at that time. And it's right near a bell that was dangling from the ceiling. And it, this happened not long after coming out of the trance state of the sitting I was doing. Back at an old address I was living at last year. But that blue arm manifested into another ET, which I'm going to show you now. Now this ET is just there. Now it's like a creature that his body lights up. It's got an antenna on its head. I hope you can see it. But the arm is like an F shape. Just here. The antenna is at the top pointing out the head. Is coming down this way, but the body's going away this way. Now, this particular ET was bringing in a man when I was sitting that was from another era, another past where they lived many years ago. And because the building that I was sat in was very old, it dated back to 1648, I think. It was very active. You could see different forms of how people used to dress, what they used to wear. But the one thing the spirit, when they appear, they're like silhouet silhouetted out, it's like seeing through a glass. And sometimes the strongest features you'll see, if, the, if you can see the outline of the clothing, or their eyes, nose and mouth, you'll pick that up. I would have put some slides in somewhere. I've got them showing spirits sat next to people in chairs. Sometimes it's still one, sometimes it could be a complete stranger. I've had many come through and I don't always recognize them. It could be just from the place or another dimension again. Now this one, was at my own address when we still lived. This happened on the 22nd of March 2011. Sat in the daytime meditating. And when you know what something feels like, you could go on the spot and feel an impression that someone said went through you. 
and it might make you feel uncomfortable, you might not be sure what you're feeling, it might affect your health. But what happens is, when there's another energy, whether it's a person, an object, it could be any, anything crossing in from another dimension that will show up. I was sat here, as you can see, you can see my head there, and my body here. What coming through me is, a, I'll say it's a man, because it felt that way. His teeth are showing on my forehead and his lips. His nose is in my forehead with my hair here. And his eyes are transparently with his head through the wall. If you look closely. But you can see the mark is very obvious to see. Now with a transparent spirit, if they've got something like yourself, of skin, or something like it, they can appear solid and very strong. If they haven't got that, and they're in a wall, or in an atmosphere, they will appear like that, outlined, but you can see right through them. And sometimes you can't always tell who it is immediately, unless there's something you can identify who it may be if they're connected with yourself, or you might get an idea by what they've actually got appearing on them, whether it's a piece of clothing, may show a bit of colour, and it may give you a clue what area they're from. This one was when I was sat. I always film everything when I sit because cameras do pick up a lot of phenomena. And people, yeah, you can question, eliminate anything you need to, it's important. But the powers and resources around you can bring a lot in. Now I was actually sat in that chair, but you won't see my face. What you're actually seeing here are two different heads. One is a male and one is a female. The male is just there. And the female head is just there. And the amazing thing is how do you get two spirit in a chair like that while there's already somebody else sat in and sitting? And I found that really remarkable when they came through. And it's been something that I've always looked into more and more each time I've sat. I don't class this as physical mediumship because it's on a different level to where the past mediums were for physical with ectoplasm. This is going in a new aspect in a different way. Now, whether you will see this yourself, but I can see it because I'm used to them. This is me, my body here, where it's younger. Now, lower down is my face. You see my mouth there? My nose is just set and the lower bits of my eyes are coming down. But as you go higher up at the top, there's a male who looks very normal and coming in. His eyes are very clear on my forehead, his nose, and you can see a moustache, so I'm knocking the mic. And the hair is all that strongly, but to one side, you can see part of his transparency looking through the wall because like I've explained before they need something to be able to be visibly seen stronger on the solid form. If you haven't got it fully it's hard to see them. <coughs> now this one you may find difficult to see. The are two faces lower down and one is a baby with his arm poking out on my jumper, just underneath my chin. Which is just there, so his eyes closed. Just there, a little ribbon here. But just slightly on that side, is another face side on. And this probably is the person connected with that baby that they probably tragically passed at the same time. Now, this one is the most interesting. This happened last year before I moved out. And out of the blue, I was 
was in my own marriage and my children. And the only reason this didn't fully materialise in front of us was because I think it got a bit wary and thought, well, if I go fully ahead, I think they were thinking about the kids. So it ended up going. I've got the stages of this ET, which comes in a form of ball of light and it was moving. And if you look here, at this side of the you can see the large ear forming. And this is all the different stages it was producing just of its head. Now ET can transmit from any range, from anywhere in the universe. They can show anything they want. They can either appear themselves or they can project from their own place and share anything they wish to anybody. And even though you have to always look for other explanations how things can happen, that day there was no explanation of any other kind that could have caused it. And as you can see what's happening in this one, how it's getting stronger with connection to far more. And the features are starting to build in its face. The parts of the universe that are still yet to be discovered by people on Earth that haven't been discovered yet. And this is like a map for you to look at now of some of the solar system that is still in the universe now that one day we'll find out about by those who discover it here that have got technology that will go at ranges that will be invented on a higher scale later on. But this is their solar system of some of the ETs where they are. Right. I'm going to show you some more pictures of ET from this one. But this is where it started. Um, for these other ones to come in. I was actually sitting in the mysterious circle in the cabinet. I don't always sit in the cabinet, I sometimes go outside or in another room. But what was happening here in this particular picture? Face was starting to form of somebody else here. And all this, what you see in here, is the active energy source. I call it like a whirlwind because it does it, it rotates fast, it vacuums, it goes at speed. That when it picks up anything, bringing it through or taking it back, it helps send. So while it was sat, I was bringing in all these different beings. And this was going on a while, it didn't matter how many times I was sitting, what camera I was using, they were still bringing these eating through to the scene and showing. And some of them will look like reptilian, and some of them are not reptilians. But the ones that are striking, you may have seen some on TV happen when you watch your live news or something and some of those funny that you're telling and some of start happening to people and you think, did I just see that? What I've got saw them stripes building up on a person. Now it doesn't mean that person's an ET. They could be just stood on a spot where an ET is and it's forming on them to be seen. But it doesn't mean that person's an ET. But yet again, there are some 
ลาอาบโอเค Now, if you was to see these every day, if you was strong enough in yourself to cope with it, you'd learn a lot from them. Not all of them are as bad as they look. Sometimes you can look at an ET and think, you know, they're too scary. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to know much about them because it's just the appearance that can freak a person out. But deep down, they're very skilled, very clever. They can share a lot and take you to points of life that you've never been before, but help you understand more than you know about how to adjust to things that has been took away from you from the time you came here on Earth. Things that you've been told to shut down from. Now you're probably wondering, what are the names? Where they're from? Why do they work this way? Who are they connected to? How many reasons would an ET want to be involved on Earth? Many questions people will ask, but you never always get the answer. I sometimes have struggled over the years of getting an understanding point of some levels. A BT weather language is so complex. To get a translation, it's impossible unless you've got somebody at their end to communicate for them and translate it in our language. That's the only way you can understand them. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to allow this guy to play the audio of what these BT sound like. You won't understand the language. You will hear one language in it of a woman sounds similar to me, but repeating the word. This is a test sitting, but the ETs are talking over. Her, okay, so you can play that now.
Well, their voices, they're all special in the way they come through. And you will find yourselves, there will be a time, you may think, what's this signal coming in? In your own home, or even the workplace where you may work, thinking it may be just nothing. But then when it gets more regular, and it goes on and on, you will actually be getting tuned in to the ETs yourself. And that's all they look for is a place, the people that they feel the need to connect with, and they pick you out. You don't pick them, they find you. I've run for years, thinking I could escape a lot of things, but it ETs a lot. They still found me, didn't stop. I had to give in in the end, and just allow myself to work with them, and that's what I've done. Now we're going into another part of how things can be shown. And even though I film every city, there's always something happening different each time. And the way things can mask over a person or just appear over or in front, however it occurs, that impression of whether it's a spirit person or an ET or something else, could even be objects, buildings, anything, no matter what it is, it will appear. And this particular time this happened, the blue farm. And even though I was there, it changed over me. Now, going into this discussion about the ether, your higher self, this is very, very important. Your spirit that works with you, who you are. This is your card. What you wear about for astral travel, if you go out, that card expands. It's connected to your physical body and your spirit. This is me here, and at the top is my spirit, my ether, just above my head. You see, you should see the face poking out of the head, okay? Now when you're a person that's about to die, no one likes hearing about death. Whether you die or you're living, that is you. You're going to carry on. You'll always be you. Nothing will ever change that. But the ether actually looks out for you. Have you ever had a day where you felt like you get a bad feeling? You think, gosh, there's something wrong. I think I should cancel the trip. But then you think, oh, should I go against it and just go anyway? Your ether is giving you a warning. It's trying to tell you, I'm looking out for you. I see the danger before you do. And he's trying to protect you and give you a sign to say, pull your brakes, don't go because you'll find out afterwards why. And it may be just a saviour that you'll be grateful of why you didn't go. So always remember, that is your higher guide. That is you. The main guide that is channeling into all different dimensions which will go from one state of copying and repeating you with what you're doing now till it escalates and changes where you do somewhere else, somewhere else. Many times. This is an example of the ether again, walking behind. Now, transparent like a spirit would be, if you've got nothing, for it to show full on, solid, that's how it'll show up. But wherever you go, it walks with you. You don't have to be physically inside you, it's there. It's watching out for you, it's helping you. And also, it's giving you the protection, but you can also have the ability to go to any other person's either, shake hands with them, talk to them, interact with many things. And that's always something you should remember, because your day job, your experiences, is 
part of why you brought the people or places that you feel, I just know that person or place, but you can't always get the me memory why. But this either, your higher self will give you that reason why at some point. But sometimes you're always meant to know. This is another ET, but this is coming into the parallel world that I mentioned, where worlds are crossing. And even though you don't always see it with your eye, you might just say, oh, we're all in this room, we're looking at each other, we talk, that's where you're at. Your reality, your awareness is a lot different to each other because you allow yourself or have been told for many years you've got to focus on all these material things. You've got to see it solid. You've got to see it as however you're trained to see it. But if you allow yourself now to make a few alterations in your life and switch off from just looking at the everyday things you look at, like your television, your books, your, your chair, anything. I think, well, if all this weren't here, what would I actually be doing now? That's your biggest question. What would you do without all these material things? Because the key thing is, there are many realities around you that you've shut down. You've got to shut down in your head. And it's not all about the mind. Your awareness has to be tuning in. And that's the key to it all. This is an experience not long ago where I get charged up for me too. They do this every now and then. They either take me, take me on board the ship. If you don't take me, they'll come to me and they'll do things to me, whether I'm awake or asleep. Now this is just the way they transmit their resources. And what you see in here, and this you may think, oh, it may be because of the window or the light beaming in. It's not. This actually moves around what you see in here. And this round thing here, what's going through to my head. And inside it is a symbol inside the actual thing. Now I do have a close-up of it, but I don't know if I'll actually put it on here. But it's a very unusual looking symbol that I've never seen before. As you can see, it's still travelling around my face. Top part of my head. And as you can see here, You'll see this funny shaped thing, purplish, with two like, white beams of light in the middle. Right, went too far then, sorry. Gotta go back a bit. Gotta get it stuck. Okay. Right. right, this is another set that I did a while ago, this was last year. Now, all of you are walking through an energy that with your eyes you don't always see, unless you've got the way of being helped to see it, you'll see it. And think about this, think about fog, how that emerges. When it's there, how it can build up and build up and get stronger and then you get lost in it. Where you can't see anything. But then it's what can come out of the mist of the fog. What you see, how it will make you feel even walking in it. Now in this particular city, it was very energized. And the ETs were working with me at this particular time. Now, at the back of me there, you'll see a TV monitor. It's only small. It wasn't on any channel. It's not got no air plugged into it or anything to get a channel on. It was just a normal white noise screen. 
and the enemy experimenting in the cabinet in different ways. And then when he wasn't the cabinet, I had to either go outside and sit or go to other rooms or places. But this particular one, this is where the energy was building up and the ET was bringing in different forms. And as you can see there, I'm there, but you don't recognize me anymore. And on the head, you can see that ET arms coming through, touching my head with their own arms, forming. Now this was downstairs in daylight. See so TV at the back. You can't recognize me. That's an ET forming the head. At the top you can see the ET arm here. Now some ETs are huge, they're very tall. And the ones that I met in April when they took me on their craft this year were different to the others I've met. But these particular ones were like a pinky paper salmon colour, taller than seven foot, long legs, long hands. And when you feel fear, you can't shut fear off when you feel it. Don't matter how many times you've seen someone, it's natural. But when I ended up on their craft, I knew something was going on, but I didn't know what exactly because there was this special, I can't even name it because I don't know. I knew, I know it's something we don't have. But like that table, for example, it was that kind of shape. And there was an ETA, one there, one at that end, and there was four ETs. And there was a lot of energy stuff on it, and it was all in sync together. We kept putting our hand in like that, timing it and then coming back out. And I had a feeling somebody was under the stuff, but I couldn't see who. But my heart was going, boom, 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 boom. And like I'm seeing you now, I was there. Right, we're going into the paranormal dimension discussion more now on this level. Where you as a person can become on the connection level being crossed over into how many multiple places at once. And you'll feel the shift sometimes, but you might mistake it for something completely different. You may not understand or realize what's going on. But when you hear the fire location, where somebody could go to you and say, Look, I just seen you in a shop not so long ago. It was at a shop and I know I saw you. And you, you was there, but when I shouted over you, you ignored me. And you may have not been there, and you would say to that person, I'm sorry I've been out of my house. I've been anywhere. I've been here all the time. You couldn't have done it, was at a shop. That's what they call bilocation. Now, bilocation is another form of it's nothing to do with twins. When you know you're not a twin, you haven't got anybody cloned as you, it's all connected with the different realities that are going on at the same time at different speeds, and how are you being into different situations, whether you like them or not, it will happen to you. Now this sitting on this kind of dimensional setting, you'll see at the back here at the top, just there, another person making the attempt to come through. And even though I'm there, I'm disappearing. Now this is how dimensions work. You can be in your own home, you can be somewhere else, even here. 
All this furniture that's in this room you're looking at, even the people. But what happens is, is what's crossing over is somebody else's stuff in your room that you don't have, even the people. They may have already lived in that house, but feel that they belong there. It can also be a point of dimension where people, whether you know them or not, are working at something and it's all clashing. You may feel something that you can't explain that feels uncomfortable, it may affect your health, it may affect your emotions, where you can't stand it. But I don't own these. I don't own that. I don't own that. And it shall not. Don't know these people. They came in with violins. I'm here, but you can hardly see me because the quality the picture on this one. People dancing. Their floor, their candles don't own them. They came in. I'm sat there. That's me going through a charge through the tea, what they were doing to me. On oh my arm, you can't see my hands or anything, just totally fading. Don't know this man. Don't know him at all. Furniture, don't own this. Stuff at the back there, just there, I don't own. This chair, yes, I own that. That unit at the back there, that settee at the back there, two cameras, TV's iron. But the things crossing over, I just don't own. Don't even know the guy. Somebody's fridge or whatever it is, just there, the plug socket, crossing in. Now this was a test did a while ago. All this is me, but going in different forms of dimension. I'm sat here with no hand on the face. This one's got a sand on his face, but they're all doing something completely different as you go through. And that's going into the multi-levels of how many times your own spirit can channel into different dimensions at once. This is outside, not indoors. This is a street where I live. But crossing in, just here, some people, and then we're all trying to make an appearance. Now this, I don't know what it means, so don't ask me because I'm still trying to find out. It could be a rare form of writing or symbol, but that came in. And that's something I can't explain even if you ask me now, what does it say? because I still need to find that out. You can get anything in here coming to you at any time. And these resources are there all the time with you. But because your life is so on your mind, where you've got to always be tuned in to work every day, do everything by the book, by what you've been told to do for so long, these are things that you just don't let yourself see anymore because it's been taken from you to think differently. But there's a lot of key realities that you're going to find. Your reality where you're at now is going to change in the future. The ETs warned me a while ago that you're going to go above hologram and I mean above hologram. Your world is going to be based on like watching a TV in 3D it won't even be that, it will be your reality where the film is like there with you, in full form like you're in it, but on a big scale. 
Now I want to talk about this, this is the last part I can share with you very quickly. Chris is in Sweden. I'm at home. And the circle he was with in Sweden, they found out that some breakthroughs were happening at my home. So we thought we'd do a test, see what happened. So we decided at 6 o'clock in England time, I would sit and they would sit in Sweden. Now even though Chris wasn't in the cabinet, I knew the guy was. I was sat there in that chair and I allowed my body, even though I couldn't do trance regular, I thought I'd go on an astral travel and see what I could see at this place where they were sitting. So I could tell them what my experience was. I spoke with E.T. and I asked him a question before I sat. If there's any way possible you could do something wonderful, to show anything of their sitting, get it on the camera, I'd appreciate it. If you can't do it, then I understand. And we'll just keep trying until one day we can do something. Now the exciting part was, I didn't know what was going on until I came back. But I remembered my experiences and I shared it. But what you actually see in the picture in, is Chris in the red colour. Now I don't know nothing about Chris's history as so, such because we got together in 2005 and even then it was never a person that filmed with any camera and any other sittings, only did maybe audio and that was it. And what had happened was, during the time of sitting, He's appearing, but in his younger days, not his time of now. And you'll see some clearer pictures of him here. I had two cameras thrown in, in the same spot. One was at a slight angle where the trumpet was. And I thought, I'll put one slightly away from me and I'll put the one on me. And these came through. So a lot of the things I would like to share, there's not a lot of time. So I did as much as I could to put something together for you today. But this will give you something to think about. You've got to trust in your own instincts, believe in what you believe, because all realities are real. Doesn't matter how you look at something, it still exists. And there's many things to still discover. And you're always going to learn something new every day. Nothing's ever achieved already. It's still carrying on. But I hope that if I ever see you again, I can share more with you. And I hope you've enjoyed the conference. And thanks to Sam for all he's done. And I appreciate everything, Sam. And thank you for really making the pro a success.
not to question things, but always remember that your realities are your realities. Don't matter what you do in life, it's there. It's how you live your life, how you believe and want to share with something. You can do, you, you can create a lot in one sense of your reality, but it's important how you have yourself over to others. Because you can create things that you really don't want in your life. Hi, I think this is a lovely talk. I wanted to share with you the audio that you shared with us. A friend sitting near me and a friend that can't be with us tonight. Many, many years ago, uh, meditation group, it's the three of us. And over a period of uh, three nights, we also received uh, communication with a, excuse me, ET talk. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask you, when we heard the voices, we couldn't duplicate the email we love, the email try to replace, which I did. Did you experience any emotional messages from them I mean, in each of the three that we yes. see? You will find they act like emotions, seriously. You can tell that anger, you can tell the sadness, you can tell a lot. But their anger, if you got on the side of them, on that side, you wouldn't like it. That's why it's always good to give out a good positive things to them to be equal. If you get on the wrong side, it's not nice. Just that that side actually get the sense. I've recorded an almost exactly identical sound in a crop circle in 2008, about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm probably not on the computer that's on. Uh, thanks very much indeed to both of you for an excellent uh, de- uh, talk and demonstration. Um, I attended a, a sales in one case for uh, a lady. The reason I went to Mullins is because uh, we had a very, very close encounter with a, a UFO. Yeah. So we went along, and this lady um, was aware of this uh, situation that I'd been in. She said, oh, well, she first of all started talking in a very, very strange language. And, uh, and then she said, I want to talk to this guy here, this one here. And she said, you mustn't doubt 